Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh. I am a sixth year self-employed financial advisor and hey, I'm not a YouTube millionaire by any stretch of the imagination, but I am where most, if not every new entrepreneur or side hustler or freelancer wishes they were. So today I wanna to tell you about what it's like to survive the first year of going off on your own. And I have nothing to sell you, so I'm gonna tell you how it is. Time to think like an investor. Let me start off with a story, okay? It's winter of 2016, and all of a sudden, I've got a lot to lose. I was the national most valuable player of the most popular sport in high school. Although everyone around me is kind of really excited to see where myself and all my teammates are gonna go and what universities we're gonna apply to, my mind's in a different place because I'm starting to see the writing on the wall for what I'm doing, and I ultimately want a great lifestyle. I want to be able to afford to travel and have to, you know, get to treat my family. There's stuff that I really want, and I don't think that the sport I'm playing has really got me on track for the lifestyle I'm dreaming of. Now, around that time, I'm coming into a different group of friends, and they're doing something really interesting. They're like starting businesses and building software. They're entrepreneurs that are starting to make money, and as I start to hang out with them more and more, they start to say things like, Josh, you say you want to be in business, you say you want to build wealth, you say you want to have a lifestyle, but why are you going to university and playing sports? Like, shouldn't you get into the market and start building stuff? And so these are the ideas I'm surrounded by, and I decide to essentially give up my dream of being like a national team athlete. I do that because I want to go out and start a business. And so I've immediately gone from the top of one social hierarchy to the bottom of another, effectively overnight. And to fill that gap in my ego, I'm now plowing all of my time into learning everything I can. I'm reading every book on business and investing. I'm trading in the stock market. I'm building a network. I'm signaling social status. I'm doing all of these things that allow me to feel like I'm making progress without actually subjecting myself to the judgment of the market. And what I mean is I'm learning a lot and taking a lot of information in, but I'm not really building anything. My thought is if I just learn enough and build a good enough reputation and talk to enough people, over time success is going to come to me. One of the things I am learning a lot about is investing. I've actually done quite well with a track record in the stock market. It has nothing to do with the fact that we've just started the largest bull market in history and I got in at the perfect place in the perfect time. But here I am with an investment track record believing that I, there's something here, there's a talent here, there's something that I really enjoy. So I go down the career path of becoming an an investment advisor, essentially, and over time with the grand vision of one day starting my own investment firm. As I am like 18 or 19 years old, and I am bleeding myself dry, trying to afford and pay for all of these financial industry courses and different programs I have to take on like an 18 year old salary. So I'm not doing that great to begin. But not only that, it's now been two months since I started and my boss isn't exactly happy with my rate of progress. He thinks that I'm lagging behind a little bit. And so I remember getting called to his office one day and he essentially says you know let's sit down like let's have a chat and he says let's let's crack open your phone contacts and I say uh, what he says yeah crack open your phone and let's just look at your contacts so I crack open my phone and I look at my contacts and he goes okay let's start from the top and let's just start calling them until we can book a bunch of meetings let's just go through all of them and let's call them and here I am, first of all, petrified of using the phone because like I'm one of these Gen Z millennial people and I don't know what happened if I had a traumatic childhood experience or what, but I hate using the phone. I feel like I'm never gonna be prepared. I feel like I'm gonna say the wrong thing. I'm stuttering over my words. And that is exactly what happened as I am forced to go through and call all of these different people. I remember being in that dark office at the evening, the sun was down, it was a cold day outside. And this manager is sitting across from the table watching me stumble through just the most embarrassing attempt at calling these people trying to book a meeting. It was in that moment that I realized push had come to shove. And all of the years of putting on a front as if I was an entrepreneur, an investor, and I had all this knowledge and all this expertise and I was gonna be a successful business person one day, it hit me right over the head then and there that what differentiated between my successful peers and me was that they were actually building something and testing it in the market. And I had never picked up the phone and tried to sell somebody something. And I had never actually taken my ideas and the things that I wanted to do and go out into the real marketplace and try to make it happen. I was completely dejected. I felt horrible. 
I went home that night thinking like, I might be in the wrong career path. Maybe I don't have a cutout. Maybe I should have gone to play university sports because right now all of my friends are winning championships and accolades. And my two best buddies who are my entrepreneurial friends now are making tons of money. And I don't really have what it takes at all. I'm struggling just to call someone to book a meeting. So I'm completely depressed. But what I do have is I have two meetings booked at the end of that evening, somehow. I remember the first meeting, I wasn't allowed to go into the meeting without my supervisor until I was able to perfectly recite the script that we had gotten from corporate. And that was super terribly awkward. But I remember that first meeting going exactly as you'd expect, just absolutely terribly. I'm sitting across from the client and I'm starting over my words because I'm trying to stick to the script. Meanwhile, the client's wondering what the heck's going on with me and my manager's looking at me wondering why I can't do the script when I did it so well in training. And I remember leaving that meeting and the client was a sales manager and he pats me on the shoulder and says, Josh, it's gonna be fine, okay? Just relax, just, just practice, it's gonna be great. And so that's how business started for me. But I still had a second meeting. And now in that second meeting, I did end up closing the client. And that client gave me $500 and $50 a month to invest. And so what that means, if you're not in the financial industry, is that would have paid me probably about $10 in commission up front and maybe an extra $5.50 every year thereafter. So nothing even remotely close to making a living, like not even close. Now, luckily over time, my manager figured out that I was much better at booking meetings through social media, like DMing on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. And so over time, that became my primary method, thank goodness. But the days of prospecting and cold calling, yeah, that wasn't for me, and I had literally zero success there. But here I am, somehow today, <laughs> six years later, with my own business, self-employed, Business is booming, things are going really well. And it's not to say as if I'm an underdog and I've overcome this big challenge, but I think it's really important for other young people to hear about a story like mine. Because all we're hearing these days about TikTok millionaires and YouTube stars who become multi, multi millionaires in the course of a year or two. But the reality is I work with high performing, successful young people every single day. That's my job is to help them invest and do their financial planning. And the common denominator among all of them is that if you trace back their success, it starts 10 years after they begin to ship product, after they actually begin to build something. But what I wanna do is show you a growth chart of my business over time. And this, these are our real numbers, okay? And I think it's important for you to see this. In my first year, as you can see, we did pretty much nothing. I was taking massive action, working my absolute tail off, probably working 60 hours a week, just didn't see my friends for that first year, and um, nothing really happened. We ended up with $800,000 in assets under management, which in today's dollars for me and my current compensation structure, that would have made me $8,000 for the year. Back then, we were in these egregious commission plans. I probably made thirty dollars or $40,000 there, but we don't do that anymore, and luckily, I was able to survive to make it to year two. And again, massive action, massive action, trying to book meetings, trying to take on prospects, all these sorts of things. And again, nothing really productive, but at least some of the seeds from the first year are now starting to grow. Now, take year three, still making massive action, trying to make things happen, probably still working 60 hours a week, doing everything I can in my power to stay alive in this business. But, but here we are at the end of year three, and now I'm probably at a level of business that I can survive. So now I don't have to have side hustles in addition to my job. I don't have to rely on my real estate rental income. I don't have to rely on other things. Now I'm actually making enough money from my own self-employment as a financial advisor that I can survive. That took three years of 60 hours a week. So that's really important to know. Year four, I'm prospecting and I'm working, but definitely not as nearly as hard as year one to three, but I now make a consistent living wage that in my city at least allows me to have a decent life. And the great thing is I'm working for myself. Took four years to get there. Now, at year five, I'm making more money than I can spend reasonably. Like if I spend on ridiculous things that no one really needs, I can sure spend more than that. But now I'm in a place where the bills are paid, the taxes are paid, the debts are paid. And I'm now living a life where I have complete control of my schedule and there's enough money for me to do the things I wanna do. And so that took five years to get there. And now if we now look at year six, this is where every additional client or deal or piece of growth in our business is just gravy because I am way above what I need to survive. I haven't cold called in probably two years and we work purely based on referrals now. So clients sending us clients or maybe the YouTube channel or other form of online content brings the clients in. Now projected for next year, if we take a look at the things that we have in the pipeline heading in to 2022, it looks like we're gonna grow massively again. And so as you can see here, we're starting to see this exponential growth, but those first three or four years were just 
miserable. They were so bad. They were so difficult. But what are the major lessons that we can take away here, especially if you're someone heading into your first year of trying to be self-employed? There comes a time in life where if you are not building product and shipping it and getting money in return, what I mean by shipping is you're not actually going out into the marketplace and selling something of value that you're providing. If you're not shipping something, you're not getting anywhere. Eventually push comes to shove and all of the fake things and the fake energy you've been putting in to try to be successful is gonna catch up to you. And for me, if I didn't have that really competitive sales manager who kind of pushed me off the cliff and forced me to fly by taking out my phone contacts and calling every single one of those people, if I didn't have that one night of incredibly shameful embarrassment, I don't think I would be here today. I don't think I would have got past that first or second or third year. So I think a really good thing to understand is that, you know, I'm working with successful clients all the time and I'm super fascinated by the story of how they got where they were. And what I find out over and over and over again is that that client typically only started to subsist off of self-employment after like four or five years from the date they started shipping, not the date they started reading or networking or those sorts of things. The day they started selling an actual thing with an actual customer, it was four to five years from that date that they were able to make a living. And it was at least eight to 10 years from that date that they started to have massive success to the point where they needed me to help come in and invest all this money they were making. So anyways, guys, in the face of all these YouTube millionaires and Bitcoin trillionaires and what have you, all these stories lately of easy money and how quickly things come to you, I'm of the belief that if you don't earn your money the hard way, it will eventually catch up to you. So anybody else who is starting out on this journey for the first year, I highly encourage you to stay patient and understand that it's going to be five years before you can subsist and it's going to be 10 years before you have that massive success you're dreaming of. So stick with it, stick to the process. And anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video whatsoever, make sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe and turn on post notifications for more videos just like this one every single week. Until next time.